Okay, we're just about ready here for the second half kickoff. Narstown on the receiving end. I'm Alan Raleigh along with Jeff Brandon and Walt Fry. This game being brought to you by the Narstown Area School District under the direction of Sam Galbraith, who's doing such a great job here this evening. And, of course, how can we forget our camera people this evening? Cindy McNeil and Jason Cleary. Jason Cleary at the helm at the moment. So any screw-ups, make sure you send those postcards and letters to Jason Cleary and Karen Narstown School District. And, of course, Tony Coya, warm in front of the fire tonight in his historic Bucks County home. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, something to be said for his managerial abilities, uh, delegating this game here, to yeah. Sam Galbraith. <laughs> well, that's what, you know, Sam makes the big bucks. Oh, I know. I mean, they oh, don't pay us. they got to be paying somebody. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the money's not going here. I know that. <laughs> Walt Fry sitting this quarter out. I, I think that was a wise move for his, for him. Pretty exciting game here. We, oh, did I mention that Narstan is losing this one? Seven to nothing, the only score in this contest. Bernie Jones going over from two yards out. That was somewhere about four minutes to go late in the second quarter. You got it. Well, the Eagles uh, are going to have to establish some offense here in this second half. They've got Carroll and Rutman back deep. Carroll on the near side of the field. This kid has a good leg on him. Sure <laughs> oh, does. Boy. Down to the five. Rutman takes the ball. Look at that guy run up the middle. He breaks free. He's got one man to beat. This time he beat him. John Rutman's going to go 95 yards. No flags. Touchdown, Norristown. Well, remember, Jeff, on the last kickoff uh, attempt, Rutman almost broke it. Only the kicker was between him and the goal line. This time he did break it. John Rutman flew up the middle behind his wedge, busted through. There was only one man there, and John said, no, 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 sorry. This <laughs> one's mine. And I'm sure Roger Grove sitting there at uh, intermission probably diagrammed this place. That guys, look, we're down 7 nothing. We just want Rubman go right up the middle, taking in for the easy score. 95-yard return, 11:47. So 13 seconds into this second half, Narstown getting on the board quickly, seven to six. Now it's time for the extra point. And Rob Wenick will do the chores for Narstown. Wenick's been fairly consistent this year. He's a good kicker. He's been with the squad for several years. I'll tell you, this is just the thing maybe that the Narstown offense, which has really struggled the past month, needs to get on track. And the Give extra point boost. is good. That knots the game at seven, and talk about getting on the board quickly. <laughs> I mean, Walt Fry didn't even have a chance to go ahead and switch our uh, diagrams here for the uh, rosters for the players. I know, I know. That's real nice, guys. Thanks a lot. You throw me out and the most exciting play of the game. <laughs> <laughs> we knew what was going to happen. We're not it's stupid. It's years of experience. experience. <laughs> We've done, like, way too many of these games. Oh, far too many. And I'm not think, getting paid, too. I think everybody at home is saying that, too. Yeah. <laughs> this will, this is, uh, it's probably maybe our last. I think we really ought to just like, what, you know, Walt kind of stand up here when it's 30, maybe 20 degrees the next few weeks, kind of handle it himself. So I used to wear, like, sport coats and stuff to these things, and uh, I said, my years of being cold are over. I'm wearing the winter jackets now. Well, you're married now. No more cheerleaders to impress. <laughs> That's the first dig of the second half. You know, all these, for two years, I've been letting you get away with murder because I haven't shown up for a game. I mean, I've just been waiting for these opportunities. I know, I know. Eagles, Westnick hang, handling the kickoff chores here. Steady. <laughs> yeah. It's, they give you soda at halftime and they expect you to be warm. What can I tell you? Wenick's kick taken at the 18 yard line. And the Norristown defenders right on top of the play. And on the tackle, number 50, Sudith Martries. I hope I said that right, young man. Uh, if not, you can send your letters to Tony Coya. Okay, set you the William Tennant offense. Quarterback Brian Welsh, number 12. And in the backfield, number 44, Tom Hoffman. And number 42, Bernie Jones. Jones, the man who did most of the uh, ball carrying for William Tennant in that first half. Wide receivers, Troy Mitchell, number 84, and Jim King, number 89. And across the line at center, Eric Brown, 63. The guards, Jeff Gross and Matt Vance. And the tackles, Bill Bosso and Charlie Kinnair. There he is again. They got him that time. And as we said at halftime, Jeff, this is the key for Narstown. They've got to stop Jones. Eagles defensive line, which generally that's been the strong point of their play over the years the str uh, because they have the extra size on the uh, defensive line, but they couldn't stop Jones in the first half. That time Marcus Smith, who is back in the ball game after being helped off the field at the end of the first half, made the tackle. We have an official timeout right now. That was just an equipment check there for one of the Eagles, number 78. Uh, Vinny Catagnus was having uh, something on his helmet adjusted by the official. 
second and seven. Welsh giving the ball to Jones, first man up out of the eye. Picks up maybe a couple of yards. It's going to be third and four. Number 66, Chuck Biago on the tackle. Yeah, they're saying Jones picked up four there, so it's third and three. No, for the first time tonight, the fans are actually into this ball game. That Casey, woke this place up. In case you missed it, the opening play of the second half, a 95-yard kickoff return by Rutman. <laughs> that was Vinny Catagna saying, excuse me, I think I'm off sides. That's uh, Vinny's second gift of the evening for uh, Tennant. <laughs> well, off sides in Town, and that gives him the first down. That's twice that Tennant has had third down and uh, three yards to go, and Narstown's given him the, uh, the first down on the offsides penalty. And ironically, on their opening drive of the first uh, quarter, same thing happened. Ten minutes in this, or two minutes elapsed in this third quarter. Eagles have to um, compose themselves a little bit, not let that run back um, dictate how they play the rest of this ball game, get themselves under control and take the ball away. Well, without a doubt, this is a key possession because after getting back on the board and tying this game, they've got to stop Tennant. And already you saw they had an excellent chance and the penalty gave Tennant another first down. This time I think it was movement on the center by Tennant. I believe number 54, one of the guards, Jeff Gross, jumped off sides. I agree with you, it looked like somebody's got off early that time. And you're right. Look at that, that eagle eye. <laughs> and Walt Fry didn't even spot me that one. I got to see it myself. You know, we should have had a spotter like many, many years ago for all those games when we really desperately needed one. Of course, it wasn't in the budget at that time. That's right. <laughs> By the way, the CBS chalkboard never has arrived. Has it hasn't been here uh, for eight years. I doubt it ever will be. Darn. John Madden's not taking our place next year? I, li I like the basic approach anyway. It's, uh, it's meat and potatoes football. It's, uh, it's the bare bones. Freezing, you mean. Yeah, it's cold. Hoffman that time, and picking up some pretty good ground, getting back to just about the original line of scrimmage. Only Hoffman's third carry of the evening. They're saying Hoffman picked up the five, so it's second and ten. Wells dropping back his third pass attempt of the evening. Left hander unloads at a sideline pass. Catch is made, but I don't know. It was out of bounds. I tell you, Mike Carroll is down on the field over there. He's not getting up. Nope, there he is. Bounces up finally. Troy Mitchell, the receiver, pulling it in that time, but he was out of bounds. That was a heck of a nice catch by Mitchell. It's a shame he couldn't get his feet down. Only the third pass attempt uh, by the Panthers tonight. Of course, the last attempt by uh, Welsh, an interception with about 37 seconds to go in the first half. Backs in the eye, Jones, the deep man, lining up behind Welsh. Welsh dropping back again. The Eagles rush coming. He unloads it to Bernie oh. Jones. Jones drops it out. He was thinking about all that open room in front of him. I tell you, Bernie Jones had some wide eyes there. He said, I have the ball. I have three guys out in front of me, and there's only one blue jersey in the way. Jones looked away too soon, though. Cost him probably cost him a first down. You know, I don't think the Eagles were that surprised that a passing attempt was coming up here. Of course, in the first half, we saw 10, and it didn't matter if it was uh, third and 10 or third and five. They were running the ball. This time, third and 10, they dropped back. Eagle put on a good rush. Back for Narstan, it's going to be Rob Winnick, number 21, and Mike Carroll, number 22. They're going to let it hit at about the 38. It takes a William Tennant bounce. Tennant lucky that time. Picked up about 11 yards on that bounce. It's going to be marked at around the 25. Yeah, 25, maybe even inside the 25 a little bit. So let's set the Eagles offense here for you. Junior quarterback, number eight, Dave Sessa in the backfield. Uh, Marcus Smith, number 32, another junior. And John Rutman, number 42. At the ends, we have number three, Priest Ramsey, and number four, Dwayne Smith. And the split end, number 22, Mike Carroll. Your center, number 67, Dave Latanzi. Number 77, your, one of your guards, Chad Ocknick. I uh, thank you. And number 65, Steve Clark. Number 78, Vinny Catagnus in there, along with number 61, Rich Romano. Carroll taking the pitch this time, has some running room. 
Oh, correction, that was Rutman. Well, they all have those numbers with twos in it, Jeff. Walt, Walt told me to get you on that when he said he owes you from the first quarter. Rubman picking up five yards there on the sweep. Second and five, eight minutes to go here in the third. This time the Eagles' backs lined up in a I formation. Give to the up man. Pick up of about two or three yards, carrying the ball that time for Narstown. Let's see. Looks like Marcus Smith, number 32. Okay. Third and one for Narstown now. So we're all tied up at seven here. Narstown strikes quickly, but they still um, haven't shown that much on offense yet, Alan. There's Carroll around the left side for the first down. He gets about four on the carry. You know, in all the years we've been doing these games, I think this is nine. Uh, have you, do you recall seeing such a junior dominated squad? No, it's, it's very odd for Narstan to have such a young squad out there, um, especially in so many key positions. This time, but again, little misdirection well, play, netting him 16 yards. He is so fast and so explosive and so hard to take down, too. When I, when I see him run like that, I wonder how in those three losses they didn't get, they didn't get that many points on the board. Rutman, uh, what, about 5'7", 160 pounds, a junior? Not much to him. Excellent speed. You can just see that burst of speed once he gets hit, once he gets out in the open. His legs start and he takes off. You know, this is the Eagles' deepest penetration in the game. Absolutely. 46-yard line of uh, William Tennant. Same exact play. They came back with it again, and this time he picks up another first down, 12 yards. I like that. Off the right side, they're really opening up the hole for Rutman now. So we don't have any official uh, statistician working up here with us. We're lucky we have Walt spotting, but Rutman's got to have close to 60, 70 yards at this stage. Yeah, he's having a good ball game, no question about it. He's been the dominant guy out of the backfield tonight for the Eagles. <laughs> William Tennant taking the time out here. It's an interesting uh, call. Well, I, I'm sure things are a little bit unsettled here. Narstan having no luck really running the ball, and now all of a sudden they're just moving it right downfield. So I the guess, coaches just want to talk things over. I think you're right. I think Mark Collins is saying, hey, look, you know, we went into the halftime uh, locker room, 7-0, seven, seven we were up. We let him come back. We let him strike fast. Now let's not let him get up on top here, guys. Let's shore up the defense. You can never underrate the effect of emotion, and Narstan certainly got the the emotional lift and got the momentum on their side for the first time in this game when Rutman electrified everybody here with that 95-yard kickoff return to start the second half. I mean, this could do wonders for a young Eagles team's confidence if they can take the ball down and get a score here. I mean, they have really been struggling to get into the end zone the last month. You can tell from the raw talent that they have on the um, on the field, and Walt said it earlier, the talent's there, it's just a matter of execution. I mean, that talent was recognized early. The Philadelphia Inquirer rated them second in the region after behind that, CB West. After the win against PW, and plus, maybe Walt would know better than either one of us, but didn't most of these guys play together on like the JV or the sophomore team that went undefeated? I think that's correct, Down. Oh, another good gainer this time, and the Eagles still oh. on his back. That's Smith, Marcus Smith. Down to the 20-yard line, another Narstown first down. Well, that timeout wasn't very effective, was it, for William Tennant? Oh, my. What a bullish carry that time. Smith was dead to rights after about six yards, and he just spun off a couple of tacklers, and legs kept churning. Picked up 12 and all. Now the ball marked at the 21. I think what it amounts to also is that the Narstown offensive line is starting to win the battle down there. They're opening up some big holes, especially on that right side where we have Katagnus and um, Steve Clark. You now, Walt mentioned in the first half, William Tennant has a very big defensive line, something the Eagles usually don't see. This time, uh, Sessa. Sessa nowhere. It might have been a broken play there. I don't know. What do you think? I don't know. It looked like Sessa on the keeper. It looked like a play to me, but I wasn't sure. 
You never can tell with that kind of thing. Kind of surprising the Eagles getting away from what they had just been successful from the four or five previous plays. As we pointed out in the pregame show, Coach Roger Groves never lost four straight games in the 10 years he's been here at Norristown. Eagles 0-3 in the league, three consecutive losses after victories against Bishop Kendrick and Plymouth White Marsh. Five minutes to go here in the third quarter. The game's tied at seven. Smith and Rutman in the backfield, and we have a whistle delay of the game on Norristown. Taking too much time to get that playoff. There seemed to be a little confusion there on what was going to be run. What do you think? You think Roger Grove is a little displeased at this point? Ticked off, I think, would be a mild way of expressing it. That would be the polite way of expressing it. I like that. <laughs> Play a game. I don't, know if we, I don't know if we have it on camera there, but Coach Grove just there with his hands at his side going, what's going on <laughs> in front of his bench? It's going to be second down. What do they make that, 17 now? Boy, and once again, the penalties. Uh, the Eagles had such a promising drive, and now you're looking at second and 16, they're calling it. First down all the way down to the William Tennant. 10-yard line. Boy, that's going for nothing. Oh, a couple of yards lost, too. Mike Carroll <laughs> it looked like he was trying to peek through the doorway to see who was home. <laughs> there was just no boy. place to go. <laughs> Whatever happened to the blue shirts on that play? That time, number 83, Kale Carver, had great penetration. I'll tell you, Jeff, two consecutive runs by Rutman and then a great carry by Marcus Smith. The Eagles had moved the ball down to the 21-yard line. Then we had Sessa on either a keeper or a broken play, stopped for nothing. Then we had a penalty drop him back, and here Carroll, no running room. Now the ball back on the 33, third and 22. It's like watching another team. It's like it's like night and day out there. <laughs> there you go. The momentum shifted again. Jekyll and Hyde football. <laughs> Sessa may have to be forced to put it up here. He's only one for seven on the evening. He's rolling back, has some time. Oh, oh almost intercepted. I can't believe that pass was completed. Marcus Smith brought that ball down. Guillermo Isaac there on the tackle. Still going to leave them with fourth down and about 12 to go. That was a heck of a catch. That went right through the defender's hands, right in the Smiths. So now you're looking at fourth and 13. What are you going to do? You're going to go for the field goal or are you going to play it? Well, looks to me like they've got the kicking squad in. I can't be sure if Rob Wenick is in or not. No, he's not. No, nope, they're going to go for it. No. Nope. Backs in the eye. Three minutes to go here in the third quarter. Sessa rolling back. Plenty of time. Jeez. Oh, and it's intercepted that time. He Nelk. overthrew his intended receiver, Nelk, with the return, bringing it all the way back to the 37-yard line. That pass intended for Mike Carroll, who was wide open, but Sessa simply overthrew it. And Vinica Tagnus and Carroll in on the tackle that time to bring Nelk down and to stop uh, what would have been a disastrous play for the Eagles had Nelk returned that ball for a touchdown. Mm. So there you have it. A promising drive uh, just blows up a Norristown face. Now instead of looking at a chance of taking the lead, now they've got 10 and on the offensive again. Hard to believe how that just turned around so quickly. And you're right in saying that the key to it was the penalty. Exactly. First down, suddenly you had first and 10, then it's first and 15. Key series here for the Norristown defense. And they've got to come up big here. And it's a lot of the same guys, so they want to redeem themselves. Plenty of two-way starters this year. Welsh this time keeping it himself. Oh, and plenty of running room. First down, 15, 20 yards already. Finally, the Eagles catching up. 26 yards, Welsh picking up. And that time, I think Welsh, the last thing he wanted to do was run the ball on that option play. Vinny Katagnis just sprinted downfield to catch uh, Welsh. Katagnus brought him down from behind. We don't normally see a big man like Vinny Katagnus uh, run that far to catch up to a quarterback. Katagnus 6'2", 210. And that ball being marked at the 35-yard line, first and 10 for 10. And two and a half to go in this third quarter. Game's tied at seven. What a shift in momentum. Backs in the open set, uh, almost a dropped uh, snap there. They give it to Hoffman, the up back. He only picks up maybe a couple of yards. Well, that time the quarterback for 10 and fumbling the snap from center. They're saying Hoffman picked up a couple, second and eight. You know it's not too cold here tonight because these microphones aren't sticking to our hands yet. It's those <laughs> nights when you know you're in trouble. <laughs> those are the nights I don't show up. <laughs> <laughs> Bernie Jones, a, a familiar name taking that. He picks up maybe five yards. 
Should be third and two. Bernie Jones, in case he missed the first half, was the key to the uh, tenant offense. It's going to be third down and about a uh, oh, long four. Third and four. Fumble. Welsh fumbling it. Looks like that one, he had the option of keeping himself or pitching back to Hoffman, but all for naught as he dropped it. But I tell you, both of these teams are pretty good at shooting themselves in the foot here tonight. They've, uh, they've managed to stop each other's drives. <laughs> you know, the ball now is gonna be, let's see, about the 32 yard line. They tried a 53 yard field goal in the first hey, what quarter. what the heck, this is only a 49 yarder. <laughs> This is a short one. <laughs> <laughs> well, I see Welsh in there, so apparently they are going to go for it. Fourth and six. Now, that's a gutsy call. Roger Grove just had the same situation. Well, we would have had the same situation had they uh, had Tennant not intercepted. Passing down tonight, Welsh one for four Delay with an interception. That's it. So that should uh, pretty much end that one. Most likely going to force the punt now. I think we'll see the punting squad now. Have you ever seen more delay of game calls in one high school game? This must be the fourth or fifth between the I two teams. I think we've had five delay of game calls, as you said, and I believe this is the 12th penalty overall. And we're, we've still got a whole quarter of football to play here. Tons of penalties. They're still gonna go four down. Fourth and 11. I'm kind of surprised by this. From the 38-yard line, this is going to give, oh, the reverse. Oh, in the round, yeah. Not too much yardage by Troy Mitchell that time. He took it from Bernie Jones, he took it from Welsh, the quarterback, maybe picking up six, seven yards. Chad Ockney, good pursuit that time to drive the ball carrier outside. So the Eagles now will take over the ball at the 35-yard line. That was really strange. I would have punted and put him deep in the territory because prior to blowing up there on offense with the penalty and a couple of questionable calls, Narstown was really moving the ball up the field. Yeah, and I mean, you've got a whole quarter to play. Why not put Narstown deep, put him back down at the five, get the ball back in good field position yourself, and set up your offense again. That Now you have the Eagles with great field position. You start him out at the 35-yard line. I mean, I'm all for it, be aggressive, you know, fourth and one, go for it, all that stuff. But fourth and 11 is a little different story, especially when you don't have much of a passing game. Carol Smith and Rutman all in the backfield behind Sessa. 35 seconds and counting here in the third quarter. Game tied at seven. The give is to Carroll. He goes off tackle on the left side, and he has plenty for the first down. Pickup of 16, 17 yards on the play. Eagles in tenant territory, ball being marked at the 47. I tell you, all those Narstown runners are so similar in their style. Both of them are charge ahead, bring me down, it's going to take five of you. <laughs> well, the Eagles this year, as in previous years, they don't have that one big star to rely on, a Timmy Carroll, a Denson, a Denny Boy. And this uh, multi, I don't Troika know, what, what back you call there. it? Yeah. <laughs> and as we said earlier, they have so many different looks. Here they have the three lined up in the backfield. Other times they go to the eye or the open set. This time Rutman. the give is to Rutman. And for the first time in a while, Rutman stopped here. Last play of the quarter, and that's how it ends. 7-7, Rutman picking up maybe a yard on the play. So when the fourth quarter resume, or gets underway, it should be, what, second and eight yards. Yep, second down and eight. We've got 12 minutes to play in this ball game, folks. We're tied at seven. So we'll switch sides. Not really much of a win factor tonight, so that really doesn't matter much. Now the weather hasn't played too much of a factor here tonight. It has been a little chilly, but um, 
no no wind. The, the field is not slick. There's um, you know, nobody's losing their footing or no bad grip or anything. Did you requisition the portable heaters for the press box? <laughs> <laughs> I was just wondering. I mean, I know it's not that cold, but I, I thought you had pool around here. You got to stop wearing those short sleeve shirts. I keep telling you about that. <laughs> Darn, I forgot. I'm gonna have to talk to your fiance. <laughs> My credit card. All right, Narstown, three backs again. They pitch back to Carroll. Carroll coming outside, beats the man around the end, breaks it, still on his feet. Knocked out of bounds at the 20. There's a flag on the play. Number 42, Mr. Everything, Bernie Jones, finally stopped Carroll after a long gain. It looks to me like the penalty is going to be against Narstown. I can't conceive of what this might be unless it's a clip. <laughs> the flag was thrown right down just about at the 20 yard lines where Carroll was knocked out of bounds. But they're marking it off against Narstown. Boy, that's tough. You negate a, a fine 25 yard run. Personal foul. Once again, the call against Narstown, clipping, there it is. Well, that's tough. You get a man who runs 30 yards and you bring it back uh, 15 on him. But Carroll's still with the first down. I tell you, Carroll showed some excellent speed outside that time, beat all the defenders. They turn this time to Rutman. Rutman breaks it, no, almost broke that tackle. Slipping inside, number 14, Bob Rosenberger on the tackle. <laughs> Rutman picked up about seven on the carry, maybe eight. We'll get him eight, make it second and two. 